connecting to the cloud server we are recording now okay thanks no Mirko for joining for the recap uh, a posteriori because of the technical problems and uh, you're switching off the camera because you have the laptop rotated yeah. so, uh, I will hide non-video participants and okay I think we can start here okay so uh so I, I just want to start with uh, a recap on the uh, simple notation for Pauli group and uh, let's say the, the simplest way to introduce the stabilizers. Uh, just for notation, we um, I recall these uh, matrices that are the Pauli matrices. I just write in this form, minus here. And then is that, and uh, given these matrices, we can introduce what we call the Pauli group, uh, which is the group on n qubits uh, given uh, by these matrices, where here we have that, uh, yeah, k uh is an integer modulo four and the sigmas are uh identity or one of the uh, Pauli matrices uh, sorry let me move the okay um so uh given this group uh we, we can introduce uh what is called the stabilizer group uh, and this is a subgroup uh, S of the Pauli group. This subgroup must uh, satisfy some conditions. Uh, first, um, we consider a stabilizer group. Well, this is a kind of restriction because one can consider uh, um, many cases, but to define stabilizer states, uh, S, we say that. Uh, we, we take S with uh, N generators. Uh, the generators commute between each other. And we also have that minus identity is not an element of S. Uh, then um, we say that Psi is a stabilizer state, stabilizer state. Uh, if we have this condition here, so basically psi is an eigenvector um, with eigenvalue one uh, of all elements of the stabilizer group. And uh, well, kind of surprisingly, but these states are uh, super interesting for many applications, for example, classical simulation. Um, and in particular, oh, one is usually also interesting on um, transformations that uh, are compatible with this structure. Um, uh, namely, these transformations are um, are, of the, um, are given by another group that is the Clifford group. And this is just basically the normalizer of the Pauli group, so it's the group of unitary matrices uh, such that um, when acting by conjugation on Pauli matrices, we obtain again another Pauli matrix. And just uh, to make um, this group finite, because U is defined up to a, um, a global phase, uh, we consider uh, uh these phases with just uh rational coefficients but yeah this is not really uh this uh, is just to make sure yeah which phases sorry i was writing yeah it. yeah uh because u is something like e to the i phi i don't know u tilde right and after this yeah and yeah. this yeah and we just disregard this global phase that is actually not important because uh, U is acting by conjugation. So, 
so it's a little bit like the group is a um like a equivalence classes of yeah in some sense yes uh -huh. Uh -huh. and you said rational coefficients or you just removed the phases well uh it's like if, um i think you can just remove this global phase uh but yeah so i yeah Okay. Yeah. 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 It's the 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 thing is, if you remove this phase, you get that the U as uh, the matrix elements have rational coefficients. I guess that's the mm -hmm. what's happening yeah. here. Okay. I think but, you said yeah. that. I wanted to hear it twice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. Um, now this group, uh, yeah, uh, the, the the important thing of this group is that it's preserving the structure of st of the stabilizer uh, state uh, in the sense that uh, if we start with a state that is described by a stabilizer group S, and now we just act on uh, with the uh, Clifford group on it, on uh, its generators then this stabilizer group would be mapped to another group that is just u s u dagger and this is uh, yeah this is again a stabilizer group and so we we are mapping stabilizer states to stabilizer states basically uh, and yeah the, the, these things are interesting for example for classical simulation now this is like the simple picture uh, now i just want to uh, argue in a simple way uh, how the symplectic structure and a discrete phase space uh, description uh, um, is behind this uh, formalism. But later on, we will see how it will pop up uh, more naturally uh, from from a more abstract uh, approach. Now, the idea in this case is first we consider the field at two uh, that well one can just consider as the field with two elements zero and one and in this field we have um, two operations that are the addition that is just the addition modulo two and the multiplication is just the multiplication modulo two and um, we also uh, not when we consider this description, um, we also basically map, um, uh, we relabel vectors in the computational basis that usually yeah, one write this way with I, um, uh, yeah, uh, basically you can just write this I as an element in F2 to the N. So it's something like, uh, so it is basically zero one to the end. Um, and so th this is the first thing we just uh, relabel things from, let's say, this Hilbert space notation to a uh, vector space notation in this case. And then we, um, we define two operators. Uh, the first one is a Z. Uh, operator that is acting on any vector in this way, uh, where these x are uh, in F2 to the end. And another uh, operator, um, yeah, okay, well, whatever, x or a or x, and this is just uh, x plus a uh, just for notation uh, and, and in this case i enforce that this operation here is modulo 2 and actually the same is uh, happening here but yeah i will forget about this uh, later and when you introduce these operators um, basically uh, if you consider a point u uh, that is of the form u, z, u, x. This is an element of F2 
to the two n, uh, and we will call this space here a, a discrete phase space. Uh, when endowed with a um, symplectic form, then we can define uh, some operators uh, W of U, and these are up to a phase of the form Z of uh, UZ, uh, X of UX. And this phase here, let's say C, this is uh, such that for each of the qubits, basically, we we must satisfy the condition that y is equals to i to the minus one zx. Um, yeah, for each operator in the tensor product. Um, so this is the up to this phase. This is kind of a cor uh, correspondence between points in the phase space and um, yeah, power operators. Um, and when you when we have this structure, um, one can wonder how uh, the uh, what's happening in the Clifford uh, action, because this W is yeah uh, given this condition is a Pauli operator. So when uh, we consider U uh, in the Clifford group, and then we consider U acting on W of U by conjugation, then this must be another uh, uh, Pauli operator that we just write in this form. This, um, for a suitable uh, matrix S and, um, but um, yeah, one, one can see that uh, if we consider W of S U plus V, um, yeah, now this is basically W, uh, sorry, uh, U, W, U, uh, W, V, U dagger, just by applying the previous relations. And if we introduce here the identity uh, in this form, this is up to faces, uh, W, of S, U, W of S V. So this action is yeah, up to this phase is linear, uh, and it must preserve uh, the the structure of uh, the uh, value, uh, these uh, W operators. That actually I forgot to mention that they satisfy this relation. Um, so we have W U W V. They do not commute up to some phase. That is minus one to the symplectic form uh, of u and v, and then we have w of v, w of u, where this u v is defined, uh, yeah, in the usual way. So it's uh, uh, sum from i uh, of i from one to n of uh, u i v n plus i plus v i one plus i and yeah here i'm using the plus instead of the minus because we are we are in a field of characteristic two so the subtraction just corresponds to the addition and so uh, the, if we go back to this relation here um the idea then is that uh, this matrix s is kind of preserving this uh uh, symplectic product, so it must be uh, uh, a symplectic matrix, but yeah, we will see this more rigorously. Um, well, actually, it's in the other part of the video, I think. Um, now, uh, these are not the only relations for Clifford operators. We also have uh, another type of transformations because we have trivially that for any Pauli, we have uh, that if we act by conjugation on uh, another Pauli, this is yeah up to phase the Pauli operator. Uh, so yeah, the Clifford group basically contains two types of transformations. The first one is induced by the symplectic uh, uh, matrices, and the second one is induced by 
uh, points in the phase space. Um, yeah, so this is, let's say, just for motivation on uh, why it's useful to consider this symplectic picture when talking about stabilizers. Okay, so far, so good. So good. Okay. Um, I, I think because you were motivating that, that this is an example in characteristic two subtraction um, addition, but basically, um, uh, I don't remember how you call the phase of the multiplication of the value symbols. Uh, uh, you mean this phase here? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the commutator. Yeah. So, wait, uh, let me scribble what I mean. Like the, the this thing here, what do you call this one? Yeah, this is just a disimplective form. That, okay, so... Yeah. So even though it's the plus, you say it's a symplectic form in the canonical, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the thing is that you literally, I can just write with the minus, so it corresponds with the, yeah, the usual way one see the symplectic form. But since we are in characteristic two, yeah, the minus is equal to some. Yeah, literally, I don't know one minus one, uh, or one plus one. Yeah, this is zero, of course, but this is all, this is two, and this is zero in characteristic two. That's the the logic would be that you postulate some operators which which map from the phase space, and then you look at their algebra, and you kind of get that there's something that looks like a symplectic form, and then then actually the idea is that it's much more general, right? It's... Yeah, well, in the, in the way I presented right now, it's kind of this the idea. So, uh, but uh, the thing is, these operators are in one to one correspondence with um, points in the phase space up to these spaces that one uh, needs to be careful and treat that in a suitable way. But yeah, we, we okay. will do that. Yeah. But yeah, that that's that's the point. Now the general picture. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I think I'm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, uh, basically, we go more general now. Uh, first thing is um, we consider for um, uh, well finite fields, uh, but um, uh, with uh, in odd dimension. Uh, so basically, everything uh, everything that one has, has to uh, take care about qubits uh, is not here for now, uh, because I will just talk about qubits later on. And we also make another simplification, and we consider these uh, finite fields um, with prime dimension, actually. So basically, these fields that I denote as SFP can be just uh, be identified with uh, integers modulo P. And this is just the set of numbers from 0 to P minus 1. Uh, now, one can also consider the case of um, uh, extension fields, and then so we can also we, we may also consider uh, fields uh, of dimension uh, power over prime, but then conceptually is just the same. But one uh, should take care of this uh, distinction that is just on a technical level. So for the purpose of this presentation, they are not really important. So this is first note. The second one is just. Um, I want to introduce some notation for uh, symplectic form. This is a very simple recap. Um, so we consider a symplectic space um, V omega, where omega is, the simpl is a uh, symplectic form. Uh, and this is over some field F, can be any field. And I just want to recall the properties of this omega. So this is a symplectic form. 
Now this must be uh, bilinear. So it's linear in each argument separately. Then uh, omega is non-degenerate. Uh, well, it's the usual one, but the property that I want to point out is that omega must be alternating. And that means that omega of VB is equals to zero for each V in the vector space. Now, uh, I just want to point out this because uh, when the characteristic uh, of the field is not true, then alternating is equivalent, alternating is equivalent to anti-symmetric, anti-symmetry, I see. Uh, but when the characteristic is true, is true uh, what's happening is that anti-symmetry corresponds to symmetry. It is just, yeah, uh, uh, the property of field of characteristic two. And so uh, when, yeah, when is equals to two, what's happening is that alternating implies anti-symmetry, which also implies symmetry, but the converse is not true anymore. So yeah. Uh, that's the uh, uh, the reason why I'm uh, I'm being careful here in the definition of this inflective form, and this will be important, of course, when we talk about qubits. But yeah, it's just for the future. Um, now, uh, in for these spaces, uh, if we consider a subspace W of V. We can consider uh, the symplectic complement. This is the space W part that is defined as, as the space of vectors in V uh, such that omega vanish uh, for any uh, W. And um, yeah, I uh, just want to recall two definitions that will be important for stabilizers. The first one is that we say that uh, W is isotropic uh, if W is contained in its symplectic component. And the second property is that W uh, is Lagrangian. Uh, if it if it is isotropic and is of let's say maximal dimension, so uh, the dimension of W is equals to the dimension of V over two. Um, now we I can already give you. Uh, a basic example of these Lagrangian subspaces. And to do this, we just introduce the notion of a symplectic basis. And this is a basis for V of the form of vectors EI, with I from one to N, and FIs, with I from one to N. Um, with, uh, such that we have omega of EI EJ is equals to omega uh, of FI FJ, and this is equals to zero for each uh, I and J, of course. And then we have omega of EI FJ, uh, this is equals to delta IJ. So for any i or j. Um, now, uh, one can basically uh, consider these subspaces spanned by uh, only the e's or the f's. So 
the subspace of the one from uh, so spanned by one yen or the subspace uh, spanned by f1 fn these are lagrangian subspaces and another interesting thing of these uh oh, considering these spaces if we just give these two names so this is we call e and this we call f then we also have uh, the decomposition of this symplectic space as E uh, plus F. And this decomposition is usually called a polarization because yeah, we are just uh, splitting the, uh, what physically are basically positions and momentum coordinates. Uh, in this space, we also have uh, an explicit form uh, of the symplectic form. And so the, we have this omega of VW uh, uh, can be written as V transpose J W, where J is just the symplectic matrix. <clears throat> and yeah. Uh, well, that's it just for the couple on symplectic, uh, on symplectic formalism. Um, and this will be the, the, the group of, uh, this, uh, yeah, the, um, the group of symplectic matrices will be, as I motivated before, uh, very important for describing Clifford's. Um, now I want to change topic basically and try to uh, approach the uh, W operators that was introduced before. And so uh, we want to talk about the Eisenberg group. Um, now we still be in prime dimension, but with P not equals to two. Now, how we how this group is constructed? Um, uh, first, we denote this as uh, H N of P, and this is a group of. Uh, elements of the form B, T, where V is an element of the discrete phase space, uh, sorry, of P to the two N, and T is an element of the base field. Um, with the following uh, composition rule, so P, T, W, S, so this product is defined as uh, on the first component, we just add V and W, while in the second one, we also have uh, this implicative form between V and W, rescaled by these two to the minus one. Um, of course, this two to the minus one exists when the uh, characteristic of the field is not two, so we are safe for now. Uh, and this is this will be a problem for the for uh, the qubit case, so we will have to take care about that. Um, one thing that is important about this group um, is uh, its center, and we basically can easily see that the center of H and of P. Uh, is isomorphic to FP. So uh, why this is the case? Uh, basically, we just need to calculate this thing. Um, yeah. Uh, so when we do this, for the first two entries, we just have V plus W T plus S plus two to the minus one VW. And this is multiplied by the inverse of VT, and this is just minus V minus T.
and um, this will just turn out to be um, W and S plus V W. And to be in the center, this must be equal to W S because being in the center means that B T uh, and W S must commute. And this happens uh, if and only if W is zero. So basically the center of each hand is the subgroup of element zero T. Which is of course uh, isomorphic to FP. Uh, yeah, so. Now, uh, uh, um, we are interested. Uh, this is the center, but we uh, are uh, we we can now study the center fixing automorphisms of the group, and this is the most important part for for this uh, formal introduction. Um, and I try to be uh, uh, as clear as possible because now there are some notions about theory that I'll try to hide uh, as much as I can. Uh, first, we just for convenience, let me denote uh, with beta two to the minus one uh, b and w. Uh, this is the form between b and w. Uh, so basically, um, and let me introduce this notation. It is HN of P is basically FP to the 2N times modulated by this beta FP. Uh, what this uh, notation here means is just uh, uh, this uh, composition rule here, because this element is just beta of VW, of course. So the, that notation just means that the product of two elements must be of this form. Now, uh, this this kind of notation is kind of, uh, is rather abstract. And in principle, one can also introduce uh, other functions uh, that just denote them by beta tilde, and this would be functions from fp to the 2n to fp. And then one can also write uh, another uh, group that is an h and tilde of p with this beta tilde in this case. And the uh, the product rule would be the same basically. So we would have VT times WS would be given by uh, V plus W, T plus S plus beta tilde. Um, but uh, now, uh, why uh, we are introducing this object first? And this is a result of some standard theorem in group theory. Um, we have that. Um, um, so, just yeah. to think, um, in the last line, I think you were introducing on purpose this um, times beta tilde notation, and you have the dot. Um, so just for completeness, in the, uh, la the last line, this... VT. Yes, in that spot. Uh, okay, yeah. Just use another symbol for this dot. I, I think you have times sub bit. I think you already. Okay. No, I don't know. Yeah. 
I don't know. This just means that this the product is taken for elements here. But so, you, yeah, I meant maybe the time symbol you were using. Uh, no, no, because this time symbol. Well, of course you can use, but in at this level, this is uh, this is a product between two groups. Ah, that is the product for the groups. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So. But of course, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can also use the times as the X, or whatever. Yeah, but okay, yeah, yeah. But this is the product between elements of the group. And then the dot is perfectly yeah. fine. Sorry, I, I just yeah. added wrong. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, no problem. Um, I was, what I was saying, ah, yeah. Um, the first result that actually will be interesting for us is that in some cases, this HN tilde of P is isomorphic to the Eisenberg group introduced as before. Uh, now, when this happened, um, uh, actually, uh, this is true if we um, we have some function. So, if let's say is this exists some function from f p to the two n to f p such that we define, uh, no, sorry, uh, this is from FP to the end. We define the uh, the alpha as a function from FP to the two n. So now we take two elements, V and W, and we define this basically differential as alpha V plus alpha W, minus alpha v plus w. Uh, and uh, this implies that beta tilde of vw is equals to beta of vw plus the alpha. Yeah. So this is the uh, the condition for uh, these two groups to be isomorphic. And then uh, we have an explicit form of the isomorphism. Uh, namely, we take an element of H and P and we just map uh, to an element V T plus alpha of P uh, in the other group. Um, okay, so yeah. And so even this uh, result, now we can study the uh, center fixing automorphism of the Eisenberg group. So uh, to do that, uh, we consider um, an automorphism phi in the group of yeah of the automorphisms of H n, and we we can write this phi in this form so as um, the pairs given by a function g, that is a function of v and t, and a function alpha of v and t in general. Mm. Now, we can make a couple of, of observations. The first one, uh, um, is that um, Vt is equals to uh, zero T times V zero. Yeah, and <clears throat> a couple of, of observations about uh, the, uh, the beta. We have that beta of zero W is equal to beta of V zero and this is equals to zero for any V and W. And that's of, of course true because we are considering this beta is just a simple like form rescaled by some constant. 
So when we take a phi of Vt, this is just equal to phi of 1t, uh, sorry, 0t, uh, times phi of V0. <clears throat> and we can just write this as uh, 0t times g of V0 alpha of V0. And this is just g, uh, g of v0, alpha of v0. Uh, well, and we can make the identification g b alpha v. Oh, sorry, plus t. So, yeah, something was missing here. So yeah, this is the important important result for us. So we have this form, this is this general form for the center fixing automorphisms of the um, Eisenberg group. Um, now, uh, okay, this could be an easier exercise. Um, this phi is a an homomorphism in particular. So yeah, you we, we have phi of V uh, T phi of W uh, S, I don't know. It's just phi of V uh, uh, okay, no, it's annoying to write like this, but yeah. Um, it's it's phi of uh, V T times W S. Right. Uh, when we when you impose this uh, condition using this equation, you you obtain uh, a couple of facts. Um, namely, first one is that G is a homomorphism, and the second one from the other term is that beta of V W minus beta of W V uh sorry oh, I'm just minus beta of G V G W and this is equals to the alpha uh the interesting uh in particular, we are uh, interested in this second relation. If we go back to uh, the standard uh, simplicity form, this result in this way. So we have two to the minus one, GB, GW, minus two to the minus one, VW. Uh, just writing things explicitly, this is alpha of V plus W minus alpha V, minus alpha of W. And now this part is symmetric, while this one is anti-symmetric because it is, uh, the symmetric form is anti-symmetric in this case. So we have to, uh, the, yeah, these things must be zero. What we get from these uh, equations, uh, in particular from the first one, we just get that GB, GW is equals to BW. And that means that G is a symplectic matrix. Um, while from this equation here, uh, we just get that alpha is linear. Uh, so since these two functions characterize the center fixing automorphism of the Eisenberg group, we basically have the uh, all the components for this group, uh, and we can just um, um, yeah we can just characterize this as well. Maybe I'm a bit a little bit. Uh, 
sloppy here with the notation, but just uh, to make things clear, the automorphism of the assembly group will be, will be given by symplectic matrices. And yeah, these linear maps that can be identified with points in the phase space. And actually this group uh, goes uh, with the name of the affine symplectic group. Um, okay, uh, I think this was the point where the other recording is uh, working properly, right? Super, thanks Mirko. The second time, no like maybe we can recommend to watch it twice. Yeah. <laughs> the second time I'm already understanding more. <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, uh, if you want, we can summarize, but I think it was like very good pacing. So we could also yeah. talk, or have some questions maybe. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking maybe, uh, I don't know, because yeah, now since the other part is, uh, I mean, the, yeah. because it, the more qualifying part is in the second part. So I don't know if. Perfect. Uh, perfect. Yes, you're completely right. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I don't know if we, Robert, uh, if you have some, you want some spoiler, let's say, for the second part. Um, I only watched this so far, right? So I, I... Yeah, yeah, it's, but, but, but now it's like missing for, yeah, because now it's kind of everything uh, scattered and there seems that things are not really. Um, the, uh, they're not going in the same direction, right? Yeah, okay, good that you pointed out because I was sitting here, <laughs> I need to connect <laughs> this to the overall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, but, yeah. I mean, the second recording has an overall theme, I'll just continue with it. That's mm -hmm. fine too. Or if you want to, I mean, if you have a recap and like briefly, I don't want to keep you here just because I missed Monday. <laughs> no, no, no problem. But but I I can yeah maybe I can just uh, sketch uh, roughly what what will happen from here on. Yeah. So, oh. and maybe this could also be useful for yeah uh, for the other for the other part of the video. But uh, yeah, I'd be very sketchy now. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the idea is that now one wants to study the representations of this group. Um, so and basically we want to introduce formally the, the vial operators. Uh, sorry if now my handwriting is getting worse because I I went back with the with the with the laptop in the original form. Um, the idea in this case is to introduce what is the uh, what are called the uh, uh, what is called the character of FP. And this is a function um, uh, in values, uh, the, the unit circle. So a point X is mapped to omega to the X, where omega is just a, a P root of the unity. So it's E to the two pi I, I over P. And now it's, uh, uh, what is convenient to do is just reconsider the polarization of the uh, phase space. So just write this as Zn plus Xn, where this Z and X are, um, yeah, it's like the spans of uh, E1, En, and this is the span of uh, F1, Fn. And when you do this, you can construct representations of this group. Uh, and they are just these operators, W of Z, X, T, acting on some function. And yeah, these are given by this guy. And we have T plus Z 
times y plus two to the minus one z x and and these are uh, acting on f of u uh, y plus x so that that's the basically what one does and now one can prove that these representations are irreps and uh yeah the, the idea is basically this is uh, a discrete analog of the displacement operator in the boson setting so as in the boson setting you can prove that this uh, uh you can prove basically uh, an analog of uh, stone von neumann's theorem so th these representations are characterized by the characters that uh, we are choosing here. Um, so if two, yeah, the idea if you have another representation that uh, on the center of the group is acting in the same way, then this other representation is equivalent to W uh, here. Um, and yeah, so that's why these center fixing automorphism are important because um, uh, basically, if you compose W uh, with G, where G is symplectic, G is fixing the center. So this representation here, let's call W tilde, is unitary equivalent to W. And so th this is by Stone from Norman's theorem. And so what you get is uh, there exists some operator uh, mu of G uh such that when uh, you conjugate w with it you obtain basically uh w of uh oh sorry w of uh, uh okay i'm mixing notation now but yeah but th this is what you get uh basically and yeah uh and that, that's uh, our starting point, basically. Yeah, it's, uh, I know it was quite fast, but the idea is just that uh, you have these standard results that uh, uh, ensures you this relation. And yeah, the unit, unitarily equivalence just means this uh, last line. Actually, this is exactly equal. It, yeah okay so this is the the bridge and uh yeah so yeah so that that's the meaning of the stone von neumann theorem right yeah yeah exactly okay super then let me just close the recording thanks me to go for for doing the session again it was no problem super nice i i it was worth it for me <laughs> yeah, okay. Good for you. yeah yes so, thank you very much thank you